Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the correction from last time. Um, I made a mistake, even though it's recorded. Um, so the correction is the infinitesimal transformation of the stress energy tensor should be minus c over 12. Um, yeah. And here I made a mistake on sign. There was a typo. Uh, so if you took a note last time, um, just correct it. And also, I made a mistake in the um, yeah last moment. So state operator correspondence. Yeah, there is a state operator correspondence so that the um, phi of uh, Z and Tr uh, acts on vacuum limit takes Z goes to zero will give you phi in state. Phi in state. However, uh, to define phi out, um, <coughs> yeah. So, and the complex conjugate of phi, um, no, Hermitian conjugate. Will define phi dagger, yeah, phi out, and it turns out that the, this um, to define phi z and z bar and dagger. So you have to take the point. So uh, I think essentially it goes to so if you go to so the the north pole corresponds to zero and south pole corresponds to infinity. And to map 0 to infinity, last time I mentioned z equals to 1 over z. But this is not correct for, 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 for a Hermitian conjugate. You have to introduce the bar. Okay. So this I missed last time. So I made a mistake and I'll explain this one. So, so that the... Um, and if I... And here, one over z bar and one over z. So this is a rule for defining um, Hermitian conjugate um, or dagger. So that the uh, if you define uh, the inner product of phi out, um, So that the um, so if you define z minus w um, as the yeah sorry I think to, if you define one over z minus w as a c then um, yeah c uh, I mean I mean you 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 just set w goes to zero and one over z is c then what you get is c equals to 0, where c bar to h and x c uh, to h bar, and then phi and x c bar and x c, and then phi and z bar. <coughs> and then we know that this part, this guy, is proportional to, so this guy, so this two point function is proportional to proportional to uh, C bar. So now since this is the holomorphic one of the holomorphic, so therefore this becomes 2H uh, minus 2H and C minus 2H bar. Okay. Proportional. And that counter with these two. The pre factor so that you get this some number. Okay. You get the some number which is independent of C and 
Okay, so you get the sum number. So this part, I made a mistake. Uh, I didn't put the bar last time. So if you took a note last time, uh, just correct it. Yeah, so this is a correction. Any question? Okay. So now, so we we'll, um, so field uh, phi of uh, Z and DW of conformal dimension uh, or scaling dimension in general. Scaling dimension H and H bar, we, we can have mode expansion So we treat phi, uh, so in quantum field theory, um, uh, quantum field theory we treat this one is the, as the operator. So therefore this guy is also operator. And then we will see uh, in the uh, subsequent lecture that the um, subsequent lecture, so we will see the commutational relation of phi. Okay. For free bosons, free bosons. Okay, and then of course, uh, uh, last time I, I think, I mean, of course, I often make a mistake at the end of lecture, so be careful. So don't trust what I'm going to say at the end of lecture. I often make a mistake. So if you take a dagger, uh, the Hermitian conjugate, um, you have mn and z, such that the phi dagger mn. Um, Oh yeah. So 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 we yeah, sorry. You need to follow. You need to follow the the finish. Um, z bar uh, two h. Uh, z minus two h. And z minus two h bar. Phi one over z bar and one over z. So this is the definition, and it is plugged that one into here, and then you get the mode expansion for. So this is m and n and z, phi minus m minus n minus m h z. So this is the mode expansion for uh, Hermitian conjugate. So that the uh, if you compare with. Uh, with them, you can um, you can get if you compare with them. Uh, I hope my handwriting is to make sense. Um, yeah. So the phi dagger and n is equal to phi. The I think. The Minus n minus n. It should be the case. Okay. Am I correct or not? I think I'm wrong. Uh, I think n minus m and minus n. Yes. Uh, yeah. So if you take a dagger, if you take a dagger, so homomorphic anti homomorphic part of swap. So, oh. So you, I hope you can see my handwriting. Minus m, minus m. So the yeah. So the so this computation relation, the generate mode expansion, generate a dagger satisfy this condition. Okay. So that's the uh, mode expansion you will get. And now, so after that, we will move on to the Euler algebra. Um, so T of Z, so we are Sarah algebra. So that's part of the uh, homework this week. T of Z is sum of N and Z. Now N, so since co what is the conformal dimension of stress energy tensor? 
Yeah, so the model expansion you have to use. So I'm going to focus on only holomorphic part. So minus n minus two. So that's the expansion you have to do. And that is. So we would like to understand the commutation result. So now we treat this t stress energy and tensor and l as an operator, so that we want to see the, the commutation relation for Biron Sorage. Uh, sorry, a commutation relation with l. That will give you your astrology. Okay. Um, so, so Ln can be understood as the one over two pi i. So now one over two pi i uh, sum of dz, uh, the integral of dz, uh, z n plus one uh, p of z. So this is the usual. Um, the Fourier expansion you would do. So just plug this one into here, and you just pick uh, only to pick L and model you have to map by t to the n plus one. Um, yes, and to get the computation relation, so you just do the radial quantization. Um, radial quantization L m and L m is equal to um, yeah, two pi i square um, dw uh, dz and w n plus one and z n plus one and t of z and t of w um, t of w. So, but here, so to, to get the computation ratio, you have to do the radio quantization. So um, what you need to do is the I must have written some, uh, but I already forgot. Uh, yeah. So co uh, complex plane. You have a zero here, and then you have a W here. Okay. W here, um, and then. So is there any color check? Yeah. So you have to do this uh, CW and C0. C0. First, you have to take the, um, so to get the computation relation, you have to do that uh, CW is the contour around W. And after that, W has to take the, um, the contour for that W is around the origin, around the origin. And that will give you uh, the essentially the following, essentially following. So you have uh, this contour, <coughs> and then this is equivalent to saying that it, uh, the the blue contour. So sum of the <coughs> Uh, blue and the uh, orange uh, will give you this contour, this 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 C W contour, and after that you have to perform C C zero contour. Uh, this will give you the radial quantization. Okay, so so as I mentioned, uh, so radial quantization of the R T Z and T W. Um, this is equal to um, T Z. Uh, Tw if z is greater than w, otherwise the opposite. So that radial quantization, so this ordering will give you this computation relation. Computation relation. Okay. And then this week's homework, I hope most of but this is very important exercise you have to do. And just impose the com uh, this OP of stress energy tensor. So you just have impose OP of stress energy tensor. So as you recall, so this is C over uh, 2, uh, Z minus W to the fourth plus uh, Z minus W uh, square over uh, T of Z, uh, T of W, sorry. T of W and the conformal dimension come here. And the plus uh, the yeah, derivative term. I mean, this is very basic relation to, to the conformal field theory, so you have to 
remember and it blocked out my interfere and it is just for phone combo interfere. Okay? And then uh, and then hopefully most of you guys already did that. At the end of the day, you will get the um, you will get the Biraso logic. Uh, plus c over twelve and a square n minus one. That's what I remember. Uh, the other one. Sorry. Um, delta and plus m and c. So this is the Virasoro uh, algebra that got on the symmetry of the um, symmetry of 2D conform field theory. So this is Virasoro algebra. Um, Yes. Uh, do you know where Spirasoro original from? He's Argentinian. Uh, uh, he, he's Argentinian. And unfortunately, he passed away a month ago. I already forgot. But that's on the same day of Weinberg, as far as I remember. Um, yeah. So I think it's the 60s. 1960, he uh, introduced this algebra. And as you recall, so the, we already noticed that the uh, LN, um, LM, so LN is defined by, I forgot, correct me if I'm wrong. So, so to, to define a width algebra, we introduce LN as a, uh, this infinitesimal uh, generator of conform transformation, and then LN and LM uh, satisfy a following relation. So it's easy to check this relation is uh, satisfied. And the Biraso algebra is, so this is with algebra. And the Biraso algebra can be understood as a central extension of with algebra. It's called central extension. Central extension of your, uh, <coughs> so the central extension C. This C number C actually is just a. I mean here it can be treated as a, just uh, the number that commute with the all all generator of the Virasoro L one. Okay. And this algebra is extended by this 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 um, central element, central charge C. That's why it's called central uh, central extension. Uh, this is mathematical terminology, and then um, anyway, so infinite dimensional Lie algebra in infinite, um, this central extension appear a lot, like a Katz Moody Lie algebra, whatever, quantum uh, um, affine Lie algebra, and so on. Always, this central element will appear. That makes uh, the story very interesting. Okay, so this is the uh, Virasar algebra, and uh, yeah, we will use this Virasar algebra a lot to, to, to understand the, the, the spectrum or correlation function of the 2D CFP for now. Okay, so. Any questions so far? If not, so let's introduce Burma module. So let's look at Hilbert space. So in quantum field theory, to understand the Hilbert space is very important. Uh, what is Hilbert space of uh, 2D CFT? The ultimate goal of quantum field theory is to, to, uh, to understand the, the, the Hilbert space and also the correlation function exactly. That's the ultimate goal of quantum field theory. 
and most of the case you cannot do that. Most of the case, it's too 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 difficult. I mean, quantum fields is too too dynamic to to and it, you have to deal with infinite degrees of uh, infinite degrees infinite many degrees of freedom. So that the, most of the case you have to you cannot do that. So you have to do the approximation, numerical analysis, or whatever perturbation theory and so on. You, but 2D CFT you can do. So that's why I mean it's uh, very beautiful. <laughs> so the vacuum state should satisfy um, the following condition. Um, yeah. So to 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 have a unitality. Uh, so you set a vacuum state that is annihilated by uh, D. when n is uh, greater than minus 1, okay? So that the uh, t of z of that 0, um, so, so to impose this one, uh, so then, then uh, limit uh, z uh, goes to 0, t of z, t of z acts on 0, and also, or the under homomorphic part uh, limit z bar goes to zero. T, t bar or z bar acts on zero are well defined. Um, so well um, defined. So the reason is that the uh, t of z. Expansion so t n plus one, uh, so n plus two, uh, t uh, ln, and it's an uh, integer. And then, um, if ln acts on vacuum to is zero, if n is uh, or greater than or equal to minus one, of course, I mean, it, if you have this, is essentially what you have is l. Uh, minus two, uh, l minus okay, l minus three z plus l minus two plus l minus one of z plus a minus uh, l zero uh, z squared, and so on. Right. So this is all the expansion you have. Okay. And if if taken z zero to zero means that the I mean this is divergent, but if l minus one l or L zero acts on vacuum to you get zero, then it's well defined. You understand? Hopefully you understand. So if if you take z equals to zero, this is divergent by one of the So that, uh, you have so you have to impose this condition to define this this is operation is a well defined one. Um, and then we have a state operator correspondence. So this is the condition for, for, for vacuum, and also there's a state operator correspondence, uh, which is very important uh, correspondence. So that is the primary state, if you have primary state, then there's a uh, corresponding phi in. Or well, more, more precisely, given the operator, you have a corresponding state. But in particular, the primary state is very important. Uh, so the, I mean, given a state, even a sec secondary uh, uh, secondary operator, there's a corresponding state. But uh, everything can be made of the can be made of the primary states, and that is really the idea of the box space. So uh, the primary state uh, and state of response, so the primary. Oh, by the way, so last time he asked the question whether there's an operator which is quasi primary but not primary. And I should have answered that question and then I already give a homework. So T of Z, the yeah, energy momentum tensor is the, the, the one. I should have known that. So the energy momentum tensor is a quasi-primary state, 
uh, operator, but uh, but not primary. So which is the homework of this week? I mean, you already know this is not primary because of the I wrote, did I erase? Oh yeah, because of this wonderful fourth sign. Okay. But um, if you follow this this uh, whatever, sh if you analyze the symmetry of a Schwarzschild derivative, you can show this T of T is equal to prime. Yep. Thanks for asking question. So that's why. Um, actually, I should have known that. Okay. So the primary, uh, if you have a primary operator, phi of uh, z. Um, let's let, let's only focus on holomorphic part. Then uh, we can define uh, the corresponding uh, states as following way of uh, compound dimension H as let's define like this. Um, Okay, um, and we know that the um, if ln acts on phi of z can be understood as again as the same same exercise you can do. I mean, essentially this WCW um, uh, dz uh, z n plus one t of z uh, phi uh, phi of w. Sorry, I think I should call it that. So, how does this computation ratio and this airline acts on primary can be just obtained by 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 just do a Cantor mm -hmm. integral. And here you can do the, the again the OPE. So that's why it's very important to 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 to, to do the computation for OPE. So this is we you already know this is primary. So this is phi of w uh, z minus w square plus uh, partial phi and w uh, z minus w. And now I'll do the contour integral. <coughs> and it's, it's very straightforward to do the calculation. Uh, since this is second derivative, you have to do the, the first derivative. So you have the h times n plus 1, and w to the n, and phi of w. And plus, uh, here is just an ordinary uh, contour integral. Just substitute z equal to w. So w n plus 1, phi of w. So this is the how the uh, Bureau theorem of generator acts on primary. So that's very straightforward. That's very straightforward. Um, yep. So therefore, uh, it's easy to see that the how this uh, Bureau theorem generator acts on this 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 uh, high. Uh, okay. So it's a. Sometimes it's called highest wave state. Okay, highest weight state. This highest weight state. Uh, I will explain why it's called highest weight. Um, anyway, so this is a, it's just 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 a, using the uh, how do I say state operator both one. So it's just a um, state version of primary primary state. Which whichever uh, primary state. Okay. Um, so from here, it's easy to see that the um, yeah um, L naught acts on uh, primary state is indeed equal to uh, H times H. Okay. You just multiply H. That's easy to see. Just plug n equals zero. N equals zero, you get the h times phi of w, right? And if you take w goes to zero, you can define the h. On the other hand, if you plug into the zero, since you have a still w to the one power, if you take w goes to zero, this doesn't con contribute. This does not contribute. So therefore, L not act on h will give you the uh, you just it's, you get the h. So therefore, it's an eigenstate of L not. So it's an eigenstate. But as you recall, so L0 plus L0 
Elmo Bar is what? What is Elmo plus Elmo Bar? Good, Hamiltonian, okay? So, so, so therefore this can be understood essentially as energy of a state. Okay? Homomorphic part of energy. Homomorphic part of energy. So I'm, I only focus on homomorphic part. I, uh, aren't the homomorphic part the same? From here, uh, do the same analysis, uh, same analysis. So then um, L0 acts on, uh, sorry, LN acts on primary state is zero if N is greater than zero. That you can easily see, right? So still you have a high, higher power. So once you take W to zero, you get the punish. Um, so therefore, um, what you get is the um, so you can just act on you start with H and you can just act on uh, the the um, the Virasoro generator which has a negative mode negative mode of the Virasoro generator um, Like this thing. And since we know that the uh, we know that from the Euler algebra L naught L m is indeed m times uh, sorry minus m m times L minus m. Okay. Okay. So therefore, um, so what is the So what is the energy? So to understand the energy of this state, L minus, let's call this, let's call it phi. Uh, I, I think I used too much phi, so therefore let's use So L0 acts on this state, is essentially measures uh, the energy. Okay. So what is the, what would you get? Any guess? Okay, let's do the computation. L naught, uh, L minus one, H, okay? And do the computation relation of this one. And this is equal to L minus one, L naught, uh, plus one, L, one times L minus one. Acts on H, okay? Acts on H. If we know L not acts on H, you get the H. So L not acts on primary state, so you get the H, right? Now for this is equal to H plus one, L minus one. Okay, and which is the H plus one. Uh, I, I call it partial pi. So this is the L eigenvalue. So, the, so this is called, uh, so you, you have to in, increase energy by plus one, and so on. You, if you, you can do the same exercise for, for, for the, the these are called um, descendant. Um, so this is primary state and descendant. Um, L minus one, whatever, Q, H, and then what else? Uh, L minus one, square, oh, sorry. Two. L minus two H bar and then can I erase and did you take a note already? Okay, I will erase. You should do exercise by yourself. Um and so okay, so um so this is called lava. So level, level, one, I, I call it level. 
Should I do the exercise for five? Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Level is zero, sorry. Zero. Um, one, two, three, four. Let's see, four. It's a bit annoying to do that. I mean, it's just uh, the same thing. Uh, L minus one, square L minus two, H L minus one, C minus three, H. And then, but the new new guy up here, L minus two square H. And unfortunately, I don't have a, a space to write down everything. So here, we have L minus five. And sorry, L minus four. Okay, so these are the uh, I just exhaust all possibility for level four. Okay. Um. So this is uh, the this number of states 1, 1, uh, 2, uh, 3, and 5. Like 1, 2, it's hard to say 1, 2, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5, okay. five. Number of states. And it, indeed, so this uh, number is called the uh, number of linear independent states, uh, P of L. So usually this number says called P of L. Um, so L corresponds to P of L. Which appears in many times. So this is called partition of L. Partition of L is whatever. One is the one, and uh, two is the um, whatever. One plus one, two plus zero, three is one plus one plus one, one plus two is equal to three. Um, sorry. I mean, uh, like li like this way. Uh, I think it's uh, redundant. Sorry. I think I should write this way. Um. O is the 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So this is for partition of L. 2 plus, yeah. Anyway, 1 plus 1 plus 2. The, uh, what else? Uh, 2 plus 2. 1 plus 3. That's called partition of L. That's the way you just do the partition. I would say decompose the integer into the, into the small integers. That's called P of L. So the number of way you can, how to say, partition uh, the integer is the P of L. Okay. So here, uh, only one possibility, and there are two, uh, three, and five, and so on. Uh, exactly the same number over there. Okay. Um, and then often um, we have the following. So the partition, uh, so the now, so partition function. Of uh, three bosons. Uh, we have a tra so trace of uh, q to the l naught minus c over 24. So this is called partition function, a holomorphic part. And um, I will in explain why this is partition function later. I mean, let's accept uh, uh, this one. And trace is taken over all Hilbert space. Okay. Hilbert space. Okay. So which means as follows. Um, Yeah, you start with the, uh, let's see, I think, uh, 
Eastern DI. Let's see, Tito. So you started with Tito of the vacuum, yeah, vacuum cap. It's called something vacuum cap. You do it now, no? C over 24 and zero. So this is the sandwich of vacuum, and then uh, the next descendant um, from zero and minus one. Okay. Ah, I think uh, I should write them like this way, maybe. Uh, yeah. And so. So the Hilbert space is spanned by, by, by like this way. So zero, L minus one, zero, L minus one square, zero, and L minus two, zero, and so on. So, oh, I, I, I think I should get more clearly mention of the, so this is called primary state. So this corresponds to primary. And these are called descendant. Um, these are called descendant. Uh, of course, uh, you can see easily see the primary and the descendant come from come from primary. Okay, you just acting a pure solar generator. So that's why it's a descendant. Um, and why it's called highest weight state? Its highest weight state means that the it sits on highest. Yeah, that's why historically it's called highest weight state. It comes from highest. Weight is H actually, and you just everything come from the uh, highest weight state. That's why cool. So, and these are Hilbert space. You can uh, uh, how to say uh, yeah. Hilbert space of two D C. I mean two D. Yeah, anyway, and that's. And this becomes representation. So if you, so this becomes the infinite dimensional vector space. So this is the one element, and the other is the descendant becomes other element of vector space. That other basis. I mean, you have the I mean, primary state, descendant, and there are lots of way of descendants. It's an infinite dimensional vector space. Um, and then. Um, so it, all of them will create so-called Bohm motion. So all of them will create a Bohm motion. So module, Bohm module, module is a representation. It's a representation of the um, representation Virasoro algebra. So Virasoro algebra, uh, Virasoro algebra, algebra acts on the Bohm module. So Bauman module is the, the vector space created by the primary and descendant, okay. generated by. So it's in infinite dimension. Do you guys understand? So you have algebra and its representation. It's the sa same as the uh, often. <coughs> I mean, we will see in the SL two C, SL two SL two algebra is the J I and the J uh, J. Okay, yeah, JJ is equal to y from IJK, uh, JK. Uh, depends on uh, depends on notation. You, you put up, uh, I mean, square root minus one. It depends on notation. This is SL2 algebra that create the representation, a uh, spin J representation, the spin J representation, uh, spin J representation. So J, um, M is equal to J. And then up to j is equal to j m is equal to minus j. Okay, so these are uh, what's the dimension of the spin j representation? Which is plus one. Um, of course, you know that the um, j x uh, plus minus i j y is equal to j plus minus, and j z acts, and then j plus minus becomes raising a lowering operator like we saw that the l minus and l plus becomes the raising a lowering operator here okay it's the same thing so it's an infinite dimensional version of uh, i mean i wouldn't say it's the same thing it's a 
it given algebra zero representation. Okay, so and this states form the representation of Birasser algebra. That's called bound module. And it's this this is this is spin J module. Okay. Representation is the same as module. Um so you, you, you know, right? So J plus minus acts on J N is some number times uh, J N plus minus one and the J Z acts on J N is the N J. That's representation. So therefore SL2, the algebra, the algebra acts on spin J representation that are spanned by these two base uh, the two J plus one bases. Here you have an infinite dimensional basis. Okay. That's called Bermond module. But it's uh, it's a yeah. Representation of Bersor algebra. And where are we? Uh, so we are talking about okay. And then coming back to partition function, so we now the Hilbert space uh, is sandwiched by 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 these Hilbert space. Um, Trace is essentially you just take this, uh, you just sandwich by by eigenvalue of L naught. Yes. Q. Q is some um, formal parameter. You can just consider formal parameter. Uh, but later we, will of course, identify some. Uh, later we would identify some torus, but uh, Q can be understood as just a uh, just form parameter. Um, so yeah, and so on. So L minus one, L minus one square, L minus two, and so on. I mean, you understand, right? So, so next is of course uh, zero L. I'm it's infinite dimensional, so you have to do it like this: with zero, twenty four, L minus two, and zero, and so on. Uh, zero L one square. I just do the at least level two. And so on. Okay. And what are the central charge free bosons? One, good. So can I erase here? Uh, you already familiar with SL2 representation, right? I mean so you guys should be really uh, fluent about this kind of very basic stuff in quantum mechanics. Uh, if you want to do the certain theoretical research. So, um, okay. Um, so here, so let's, so the C is equal to one in for free bosons. And now act on vacuum, you get zero, okay? You get zero. So therefore, you have a one. Q3, ah, oh, sorry, no, no. Q3 minus one over 24 from, from this term, okay? And now act on vacuum is just a zero, okay? And you know, C is equal to one, you have a Q3 minus one, one over 12, 24. And next, so as we already know that the here, if L not acts on zero, you get a one, okay? Do you, do you understand? So here, H is equal to zero, okay? H is zero. So next level is uh, already right. H plus one, which means one here. So here, you have a Q, one minus C over 24. Oh, sorry, one. The next is the same thing, Q to the two minus one over 24. So, so this can be understood as sum of uh, partition of L, uh, Q to the L minus one over 24, L runs for zero to infinity. Okay, so that's a partition. Uh, there's another way to look at this one. Um, here, each level you only you always have L minus one to the some power the, to the level, right? To the level. So that will create can be understood as the uh, Q. So you have an overall factor one over twenty four. That will create one of one minus Q. 
Why? So you just do the ge geometric series expansion. So you just do the tail expansion. This is equal to 1 plus q plus q square plus q cube and so on. Okay? This is exactly the same as L minus 1, L minus 1 square, L minus 1 cube. That corresponds to this kind of series. Okay? And now you have L minus 2 and L minus 2 square and so on. That will create 1 minus q square, 1 over 1 minus q square. Okay? So this is equal to uh, 1 plus q square plus q to the fourth plus dot 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 dot. This q square corresponds to L minus 2 acts on H1. Okay? L minus 2 square acts on H1. No, no, H1, sorry. The primary state. Okay, sorry, no H1. Okay. Okay. You have to multiply. Okay. Q times Q square. What does it correspond to here? Which state corresponds to Q times Q square? In this list. Can you find? So you, you multiply. Q corresponds to L minus 1. Q squared goes to L minus 2. And if you multiply, which state does it correspond to? Which state? Huh? Why level 4? By definition, q times q square is q to the q, which means the L0 has to be 3, which means uh, level 3. q times q square, I mean, just very simple, L minus 1, L minus 2 acts on primary state or in vacuum. That corresponds to this guy. L minus 1, L minus 2 acts on primary state. Do you understand? And next, the same thing. So for instance, uh, q square times q square here. What does it correspond to? Yeah, this guy. L, L minus 1 square, so this one corresponds to oh. This one corresponds to L minus 1 square, okay? L minus 1 square and L minus 2. If you multiply it together, that corresponds to this guy, okay? this state, and so on. So you can just exhaust all possibility by just multiplying. So we know that the, uh, here, we already, this term corresponds to this one. Okay, so let's, let's do step by step in that case. So this term corresponds to uh, this guy. And this guy corresponds to 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 this times this one, right? And how about this one? It's not included. So therefore, you have to multiply 1 minus q cube to include this guy, okay? And this guy is already included. The same thing, uh, L minus 1 to the force coming here, so it's okay. The L sum Q to the 4 is here by geometric series. Okay, and then L minus 2 square really come from L minus 2 square, right? Huh? Sorry. L minus 1 square, L minus 1, 2 is this times this one, right? I already explained. And this one corresponds this times the q to the q, okay? And so on. L minus 2 square coming from here, this one. And L minus 4, so therefore you have to multiply 1 minus q to force. You understand? That's how you exhaust all Hebrew space. So therefore, so this can be understood as the 
3 to the minus 1 to the 24th product of a 3 to 1 to infinity 1 over minus 2 to the n. And this is called, uh, this one's called uh, in 20th century, it's introduced by delicate. So it's introduced in uh, sorry, 19th century uh, by that again. It's very remarkable. Uh, if you study uh, the 2D conform field theory, so you encounter lots of this kind of very nice special functions. Uh, later we will see the Jacobi uh, set of function and so on. And we will see why it should appear. There is a reason and that why this kind of special function should appear into the CFT. Because we need a modularity. Uh, anyway, so uh, in 2D, 2D CFT can live on any two-dimensional manifold. For instance, if we, if we have a 2D CFT can live on this torus, and but torus. So we will see in later lecture that torus should enjoy so-called SL two Z action as a mapping cross group SL two Z. So therefore, partition function should enjoy this symmetry as a mapping cross group action. And more, moreover, so that you can just consider any Riemann surface, as you learn in the uh, my differential geometry course. So this also has so-called ma mapping cross group action. So there's the fu the partition function in 2D CFT live on here should enjoy uh, some si the the, the diffeomorphism group or so-called mapping cross group action. Therefore, so it's very natural to have. Uh, so we will see later the, this kind of like a special function which was studied by, by in mathematician in 19th century should appear and it, lots of identity like a Jacobi identity and so on uh, naturally appear in, uh, in 2D form. Okay. We will see later. Okay, so we have for as a partition uh, function of free boson we have a two expression. You have a one is is used by by this P of L, which is partition of L, and or you have a data king data function. So, is it okay? Unitarity, so you need to have a unitarity so that the um, so now L and J acts on H the primary state is zero when J is greater than zero, so that's we know already. So that if you take Hermitian conjugate, uh, L J acts on H is equal to zero when uh, J is less than zero. So that's a Hermitian conjugate uh, statement. So as you recall, so this is the uh, Hermitian conjugate. Uh, so in particular, uh, for instance, if you take the norm, um, so and then so it's good exercise. I mean, you guys just just do the exercise by yourself. But the L whatever minus uh, sorry K N uh, L K one. So this is one state, and then the other state is inner product is L minus one L minus L N acts on primary state. So of course I assume K and uh, sorry K something K something and L something is uh, positive integer. Uh, I hope I yeah a positive integer. If you take an inner product, this is zero. 
unless Which means that the sum of k something is equal to the sum of l something. Okay, so this this one you can I mean it's a good exercise to do. I mean uh, Okay, let's do the exercise. I mean uh, it seems like some people to mention my my election. I, I'm very very happy to go too fast. L2, L minus one. So this is the some uh, typical in a product that has a different level, right? Different level. And do the Virasar algebra, uh, just do the Virasar algebra L minus 1, L2 plus 1 times L1. Do you agree? Should be okay, right? No, no, no. Three times, sorry. You should call him. Yeah, it should be okay, okay. Three times L minus one. Do you guys agree? So therefore, L2 acts on H is zero because of this condition, okay? J, L2 acts on H is zero, right? Because j is greater than, than zero, and l1 acts on h is zero, so therefore this is equal to zero. Okay. And you can check for other non-trivial case by the exhibit calculation, and you will see why it should be the case, and you have you can have a proof. That's how you get. The anyway. Um, This is. We have an H on N, so it's just inner product. So, so you have a. Oh, I already erased. So now I erased, but uh, we have the norm. Can be understood H L N L minus N H, and we just apply Virasar algebra, uh, which is the H. That's why Virasar algebra is important. Um, plus C over twelve um, N N square minus one um, H primary state. Okay, so therefore you will get. Oh my goodness, I think. Oh, so this is zero. Sorry. So this is equal to um, uh, two n. Two n. Okay. Uh, my handwriting horrible. Let's distinguish n and h. Um, plus c over twelve. N plus k. you mentioned that the okay so you have to impose you have to impose this is you have to impose this condition that's the unitary dimension and you have a inner product of the it's almost fair you should get in uh non non zero value oh, I'm almost more precisely speaking if it is just a, a tri tri trivial state it's just a just so since this grows linearly in n, okay, linearly in n. On the other hand, here it grows quadratic, uh, so no, cubic in cubic term, n cube, right? You have an n cube term. So this this term actually dominate when, once it dominate once you increase n, the number n. Okay. So therefore, if c if c is negative, if you increase sufficient number of n, then this term becomes negative. So if Therefore, C has to be for unitarity. Okay. 
So this is the condition coming from unitarity. C has to be greater than uh, or equal to C. So if you have some uh, C is negative, uh, which means the zero is not unitary. But recent years, it's fun. It's kind of fun. I mean, anyways, the difference is some fun, but with the uh, mathematician and also even theoretical physicists encounter lots of interesting 3D CFT that is not unitary. Somehow, if you only focus on like a Algebraic part of the, the, the theory, even non unitary CFT is not the boring theory. Boring. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I, I'm I'm also kind of doing some kind of this kind of research. Like, I mean, yeah. But but anyway, as a two D CFT, it's uh, if non unitary means non physical. But uh, it's not the uh, boring uh, theory. Okay, any questions so far? So I'm going to move on free bosons. Uh, it's a bit early, but I think it's a good time to take a break. So let's take a 10 or 15 minutes break. And then, yeah, I will talk about the free boson and free primer. So homework is graded, so, so there are three homework to submit by hand, so you, you should pick, and if you do the homework, you should submit today. Um, okay, let's take a break. Oh, be careful, be careful. Why do they all minus to this? They all to Oh, that is the coming from... So, here, dagger is the defined like this, way. Right? It's black. Yeah, but the energy momentum tensor is not a prime one. Huh? It always comes from the energy momentum tensor. Yeah, but but here here this this one uh this argument is applicable for any 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 operator. Uh, oh, oh, scaling dimension h. But this seems like a a primary field transform under the z two. Z bar. Z two. Z bar. So this works for every. Yeah, every, every, anything. I think. And also here, 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 it's also quasi primary, right? T of Z is quasi primary, so the two point function obey this. Uh, this roll, this roll, so it's still okay. So 
Yeah, 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 of course, of course. Mm. So, as I mentioned, so for instance, yeah, here is one plus Q plus protocol, and here one plus Q squared plus protocol. So you just multiply this times this, you get a Q cube, right? Yeah, so, so that corresponds to uh, 0, L minus 1, L minus 1, L 2, which is L naught on the square of 1, L minus 1. Why two in I mean, this one is uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's sure, it's a, two beers are generate the axon body. But that doesn't mean two incoming. Okay. Okay. Um. Please pick the, your homework if you submit by hand. Otherwise, T has to bring it back. And if you want to submit by homework by hand, just submit here. by the state operative correspondence. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is meant by uh, scaled down to the origin? I mean, I, I can understand that you, you treat uh, air naught as a Hamiltonian, mm -hmm. and if you have a state at the origin, and if you apply Hamiltonian to it, it it's like uh, time uh, it is uh, it, it's like Hamiltonian at time state, right? So it, 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 it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, moving in the yeah. time, so is it, so it is the same thing uh, as with your scale down. So, uh, scale down, right? so, so scale down means that the I mean scaling transformation is the complex plane in the circle. The scaling transformation is really scaling of this the circle. It is a scaling transformation oh. and make it larger circle. Uh, so the, the state leaving it here, by Hamiltonian transformation, you can just move into this big, bigger circle, define this. Uh, yeah. The scaling down means sca this circle becomes shrinking uh, okay. to the origin. Mm -hmm. That is a unitary transformation. Okay, so so the state of the correspondence is saying uh, you, you can uh, you can apply an operator at the origin. Yeah. Uh, so you, you get a state. And uh, if you if you apply Hamiltonian to it, you can get uh, any state with any radius. Yeah, yeah. I mean, operator. From it's operator, you can do this. I mean, Hamiltonian something. You can just define a state on oh, okay. at the time. So, so this is the state. Of it. Yeah. But this, this is only true for for because the theory has a scaling symmetry. Even if you just scale, the the radius becomes bigger or smaller. The, it's a symmetry of the uh, theory. 
Uh, that's why sh you can sh this state can be shrink down to the point here. That would create the operator. But this is only true for conform people. Yeah, because if you don't have skill uh, symmetry, you, you, you cannot do You cannot treat a Hamiltonian as a not. Are you are you going to see is it the for for, for budget thesis? No. No, okay. No. So are you going to write a thesis under Joyan or or me? I uh, I have not decided. <laughs> okay. Uh it's maybe it's next semester. Next semester, okay. Okay, shall we resume? Okay, um, so let's talk about uh, the simplest class, uh, the free bosons. Um, this is almost parallel to what you learn in the uh, KFT 
So yeah, most of the people here also already, uh, not so many people are back yet, but anyway, so. Um, QFT, and then, so in QFT, you just learn the bottom from primary first. We will do the sample to this FT. And what is a free bottom? Free bottom is just a Lagrangian is given by the action or action is given by. So it's just kinetic term. So this is the simplest um, quantum field theory you can consider. Um, and then now, so we just in consider uh, that the two-dimensional theory is living on cylinder. And then with, uh, with circumference is L. Um, yeah. So the circumference is, uh, so this is the x direction, and this is t direction. And circumference here is uh, uh, length is L. Okay. Um, length is L. So the, uh, we impose phi of x plus L, uh, T is the periodic. Okay. And as you can easily see, um, if you work on the uh, Minkowski signature, I mean, it's the, the you get the uh, equation motion, it's kind of order equation, uh, masses kind of order equation, which is in uh, Minkowski signature. Um, what is the kind of order equation? Um, it's so this this has the following the um, mode expansion. It's easy to check the. Um, it's satisfied this chronic order equation. I mean, and this is very straightforward exercise. I mean, it's it's two D version of what you're learning in KFT. Function and just Fourier transformation that satisfy this um, <coughs> that satisfy this crying order equation and also this periodic condition. Okay. So anyway, so this, that's easy to check. I mean, just plug it up into here. You will see. In particular. Um, one can define the momentum by, by just canonical quantization condition and it, I mean, in usual manner or as you learn quantum field theory so this is the uh, the way you define I mean phi t of <coughs> excuse me phi t uh, Delta T phi is canonical conjugate to the momentum uh, and then in quantum field theory so we just canonical quantization so field phi xt um, and phi uh, yt is equal to um, so this is the usual canonical uh, quantization you impose uh, I think through that's uh, Sheldon already did that mm -hmm. oh, okay. okay I think he, 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 he looks a very good lecture like a very like a detail um, interest every step I like me I, I'm very
very bad at uh, introducing in detail. I'm not good at computation, so. Anyway, so it's better to take his course in cinema course. Um, so, so this is a chemical quantization. Um, then, so you, you now treat phi and pi as an operator. So therefore, a n and n dagger becomes operator. As a, here is just Fourier transformation by imposing this. Um, Periodic boundary condition as well as uh, this uh, crank order equation. But um, now, so if you impose the canonical quantization, now an N and dagger is, uh, becomes operator. And uh, this is the homework. I mean, it's very straightforward, uh, even though it's tedious a bit. I mean, you just do the, need to do the Fourier analysis. Um, is equal to. Uh, k times delta k plus l t and the pitch is equal to a k bar and the a k bar. Um, otherwise, zero. So this is the um, essentially the same as the um, harmonic oscillator. So creation uh, it's, it's the same as uh, the computation relation creation analysis oscillator. But there is an infinite many. K is and L are the integer mode. So 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 therefore, I mean it's just free boson, it's just infinite many harmonic oscillators. Yeah. <coughs> infinite many copy of harmonic oscillator. Um, yeah, so this is the homework for this week. Uh, it's uh, everybody should do once you learn the quantum field theory for this computation. It's Ah, yeah, so, and, uh, so, sorry, sorry. I, I think I should write them here. So, phi zero and phi zero is equal to. Ah, sorry, sorry. sorry. Ah. So, so, this is the, as you can easily see, so this phi zero is center of mass, uh, center of motion, center of motion. So, it's average body of the field along x so it's independent of the x and t so x and t so it's a center motion and this is uh, the uh, zero mode uh, it's called zero mode um it's 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 kind of the um momentum momentum but it can be it can be understood by up the scale it can be understood as uh, n equals zero version of a so here, I exclude any is not zero, because pi zero is essentially a zero, up to scaling. Up to scaling. So it's a momentum. So as you can easily see, so if you take the t derivative, t derivative, you get the this part, right? Pi naught, pi naught. So it's just uh, the center of mass of momentum. Okay. okay. Uh, but when n equals to zero, this becomes constant, as you can easily see, and this becomes constant. Essentially, pi zero can be understood a zero plus a zero bar up to constant, constant, constant scale. That's why it's called zero uh, or uh, momentum. So this is just a quantization by uh, by canonical quanta uh, yeah yeah canonical quantization from Lagrangian. Um, we can also introduce the Hamiltonian for free bosons, which is uh, yeah 
هیچی فلا نرین تویری لیدا سفرمیتانیم of the theory is just how I do the that just the Lugian transform Lugian transform of from Lagrangian and do the the spatial integral phi t square and normal ordering and phi x so dou x my English is horrible dou x of phi square um, and then special integral. So you, you need to impose normal ordering to define a Hamiltonian. And the plug this um, model expansion into here. So this is also homework. I mean, it's just pre analysis. I and mean, then homework to, to show that 2 pi over L uh, pi naught uh, square plus pi over L. Then And it's super easy exercise. I mean, I mean, as I mentioned, so I mean, this is the infinite many harmonic oscillator. So this one is equal to uh, two pi L over. Four homomorphic part. Yeah, so this is very familiar uh, commutation relation for harmonic, uh, uh, harmonic yeah. uh, oscillator. So when m equals to zero, uh, yeah, m equals to one, it's very uh, yeah familiar object. But 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 you have infinite many. Uh, so therefore, uh, when m and m is creation operator, creation operator. But M is negative, is annihilation. Um, yeah. So if you have eigenstate of a Hamiltonian, uh, then uh, you can just easily see that the um, So we have E plus T and pi over L that acts on A and A. So this is a state uh, that is created from the um, uh, eigenstate. And so this is very familiar thing when, when you learn a uh, harmonic bus line. Okay. Um, so that's the brief interest. I mean, anyway, technically detailed version uh, part is the relegated to homework. So it's a crash course of the crash crash course of the quantization pre bosons. So now we will do the weak rotation and they go to the um, Euclidean version. So to go to Euclidean version, uh, I'm very lazy, so I just want to do the following. Um, so now, so we want, I want to go to the Euclidean version. Uh, so weak rotation. So t, uh, so t goes to minus i t. And you define and W is T minus I X and W bar is T plus I X. Then uh, this part becomes a point. Um, so this part becomes the point. It's very straightforward exercise. Um, minus i and t, the difference is w plus w bar. And now, so here, as you can easily see, this becomes 
um, study, and uh, this becomes W1. Very straightforward. So that's a Euclidean version of the um, mode expansion. Then, uh, so this is the cylindrical coordinate, and as I mentioned many times, <coughs> you can go to the um, the cylinder to the the plane by conformal transformation, of which is uh, z is equal to e to the two pi z is equal to e to the two pi w over f okay. two pi f. So then you can just have a spatial circle here becomes a circle here at the, around the origin. That's a conformal transformation. Then uh, this model expansion can be written. It's very simple. And phi of z. So I'm just only for okay. As I mentioned uh, in the in the first part of the lecture, so I mentioned that the, if you have a, a operator phi of scaling, you have the point uh, the um, expansion phi n c minus n minus h n is integer. Okay. It's very similar form. It's very similar form because uh, I mean uh, this is the scaling dimension. Scaling dimension. Uh, is equal to h. So this is a model expansion I introduced at the beginning of lecture. But here it's also a very similar. But now, so as you can easily see, phi scaling dimension is zero. Okay. By dimensional analysis, I, I explained last time. So the dimensional analysis, the phi has to be uh, scaling dimension should be zero. It's so therefore there is no shift by h bar. Uh, no, no h. H, the conformal scaling dimension. And uh, also, so there is some uh, log term should appear because of uh, the, uh, since, yeah, H is to zero very particular, so the log term should appear. But uh, once you take derivative uh, holomorphic kill, I, phi, if you take this one, you get it's a very simple answer of the C plus sum of N is not zero. Okay, as I mentioned, so pi zero can be understood as a zero mode of A. Okay? So you can incorporate pi zero into A, so after this can be understood as the sum of A n e minus n minus one n is integer, where the A zero is defined pi naught. And if you consider the outer homework part, Okay, so this, and you get the desired uh, model expansion. Okay, so uh, as you learn uh, in homework this week, so this one is primary field of conformal dimension one. Okay, so you so, well, if you solve the homework, you will get this one. And it, so this primary field of the phi is the have the this kind of model expansion, and then minus one. And uh, you have a really uh, desired uh, model expansion. Okay. Um, yeah. So now, so let's look at the, the, the two point function and so on. <coughs> two point function, for instance, one can consider the following two point function. So phi of z, the phi of uh, w, 
I mean, it's a, it's a bit, bit strangely behaved because of this log term and so on. And as, I, as we learned, so the, the primary uh, last time is indeed um, Oh, sorry. Um, it's essentially z minus w, right? So that's. I think uh, I need to check my lecture note. I didn't print out that term. I think this is correct. Um, so, so the last time we. Uh, I, I forgot the coefficient. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not careful, as you know. Of a coefficient. So this is the two-point function of the um, uh, two free bosons. Let me check in that case. Um, it's not. Uh, it doesn't take so much time. Um, uh, let's see. Where did I write down in the lecture note? I already forgot where it is. <laughs> oh, I didn't write down. Sorry. Maybe I misunderstood. Okay, and maybe I didn't write down this one. So it's oh, I have written down three point seventeen. Oh, okay. So this is actually indeed a, you. You guys did homework. You you guys should notice. <laughs> so this one I ju I just obtained by 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 taking the um by x um x y. By z and take a inverse, right? A inverse z equal to this. Yeah, so that you guys did homework and then derived this. Actually, sorry. So natural gas is indeed. So you just do the uh, act the w in the derivative. So this natural <coughs> gas is indeed uh, indeed one over uh, z minus w minus one. Let's see whether this is true or not. Um, I just got confused in one part. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a tie point direction of the lectures. Oh, good, wonderful. <coughs> Let's see if this is, this is the case. Uh, so 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 just plug this mode expansion into here, and then so the phi of z and the phi of w correlation function can be understood m is not m is zero and one over n, and then. I just plug this mode expansion into here, and it says a n and a m are the um, so are the 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 operator now. So we need to be careful about this one. So so we have to use the computational ratio of this uh, a n. Yeah, so we have to use the, this computational relation to compute this one. Um, so then, uh, this is a uh, straightforward computation. Uh, shall we do that? Uh, if you want, I can do that. Let's see. Um, so, so let's see. So let's bring so overall factor one over w. So let's bring then m n is not zero, one over n. And here, so computation ratio is uh, non-banishing only when k plus l is equal to zero. Okay, non-banishing. So so non-banishing part really come from m n is equal to minus n. Okay. So therefore, uh, this will, will give you uh, if you n is equal to minus n, you get that n and z minus n w plus n. 
Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So this one is indeed equal to 1 over w, uh, 1 minus w over z divided by w over z. Because the geometric series, so, so now, ah, sorry, here only n is greater than z. So no magnitude term really come from n is equal to minus n, okay? So you just impose m is equal to minus n here. And do the geometric series. So as I mentioned, this is equal to this part is equal to w over z plus w over z square plus w over z cube and so on. Okay. Okay. Do you agree? And they agree. So now for uh, let me erase. So therefore, this one, this one will simplify into so simplifies to um, oh, one over c minus w. Am I doing proxy? W cancel and z multiply here. And the reason why there is a minus sign, uh, there is a difference by minus sign is I didn't take account this i, I think. If, we, if I take into account i, I should get the correct sign. But uh, somehow, pi pi should be minus loin. The pi pi term should be minus loin. So pi is over pi should be plus. Oh, this is minus? Yes. Oh, thank you very much. OK, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Then it's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much. I think this i should count with this i in the case and appropriately to get this. Thank you. Okay. So then we get the desired uh, answer. Desired answer. So and then so this is. Exactly, so as I mentioned, uh, the quasi primary field, if you have a quasi primary field O1, O2, W, and here you have a C12, uh, Z minus W, 2H, uh, uh, right? So uh, Okay, so this is not the uh, good so I, sh I should introduce the next one. I should introduce the next one. Um, okay, and it's differential, so partial. Yeah. So this one is equal to uh, minus 1 over uh, t minus w square. Um, yeah. So this one is, so, so you know that this one is uh, primary. So this part is primary. H is equal to one. So therefore, this or again um, follows the rule that the, this one is equal to C one two Z minus W to H. Okay. So this, if you have a two point functions quasi primary field, um, you should get the one over Z minus W to the two H. And now h is equal to 1, so this really follows the two point function of the prime. Okay. Any questions so far? And free bosons, uh, last time we introduced this energy momentum tensor is the one half. No uh, ordering of um, and plug that uh, ordering to here. Um, 
the model expansion to here, then you will get is that the one over two um, sum of n g minus n this one. So that can be easily c, and we know this should be equal to uh, sum of ln uh, t minus or let's call k minus two k is integer. So therefore, uh, the Birasol generator of the free boson is indeed equal to one half sum of can be written as the z generator. So the result generator of three boson is indeed can be written as this, this, this mode expansion a n and a n, okay, so like this way, by the up, inc including normal ordering. That is very consistent with Hamiltonian. We look at as let, let, let me let me write write down till the end. Um, not is equal to. Uh, so here you have to be a bit careful about the normal ordering because of let me think okay um, here so one half yeah uh, one half sum of So this is uh, zero mode of the Virasoro generator. And since it's normal ordering, so normal order, annihilation operate to the right and the creation operate to the left. Okay? And we know, did I erase? Or yeah, still rest much here. Um, negative mode is the, the uh, negative mode is creation operator. Positive mode is the annihilation operator. So therefore, this can be written as sum of um, m greater than zero, n minus m, and m plus one half, n squared. So, yeah. And then, so do you understand? So the so here integer sum over integer. So some part becomes negative, some part is positive, and so on. So so negative has to be left, and positive has to be right. Okay. So therefore, uh, this one half cancel by just swapping order, and you get this one. And but zero mode should be stay the same. And in fact, um, um, Hamiltonian written here. Hamiltonian written here can be written as the um, yeah, it's so you can just compare between them. So Hamiltonian is the uh, two pi over L. So this is exactly uh, what we have expected uh, up to scaling. I mean, in one over two pi over L is just the scaling. Of so this is what, what we already learned uh, previous lecture. Any questions so far? the energy for Hamiltonian, uh, sorry, energy for plane, and then, so we move back from the, uh, did I erase? I uh, erased. 
Move back to the cylinder and see the meaning of central charge in 2D CFT. <coughs> So to do that, uh, so now, so we just move the, um, so this is the, uh, the complex line, and we move to cylinder, cylinder. So we're going to move back to the cylinder, and what's going to happen is Hamilton. That's what we're going to see. To do that, um, so, so since this is normal ordering, so T of T, one point function should vanish. Okay. So since we put creation operator to the left and annihilation to the operator to the right, so therefore the one point function should vanish. And we know that this one is equal to um, Yeah, uh, this one uh, can be understood as follows. Sorry, I got confused. Just a moment. Do I need this one? Do I need this one? Uh, to be honest, I don't think we need. <coughs> I don't think we need this thing. Okay. Um, I don't think we need this one. So uh, let me do the following. So we know that the uh, the stress energy tensor will so in this this exercise that the yeah so the T of W T T of the, the component transformation W final term component transformation so T T of W is indeed uh, transformed as following way um, so uh, D W uh, minus two and then T of Z minus a short short term derivative C of R. So this is the uh, uh, transformation rule for stress energy tensor. Okay. Um, and then now so we just move from the cylinder Plane to cylinder, so we just use the um, z is equal to e to e to e by w over l, and try to relate uh, t t cylinder and the t. So so that, so therefore, what we have is the log z equal to w, and the the factor should involve l over two pi. I think this is the transform transform. So plug that one into here, we can relate T cylinder W is equal to uh, 2 pi over L square T plane of Z and Z square 1 over 24. So this is what you get from the uh, the analysis of Schwarzschild derivative. <coughs> so where I use the c is equal to one in this case, so three bosons. Um, is it easy to see that? Let me try to get 
the yeah so yeah uh, it's easy to see actually yeah. um, so here so dw dz uh, minus 2 is indeed 2 pi over L square uh, Z square okay and then uh, this part is indeed uh, W so it's a straightforward exercise to get this answer is indeed um, 1 over Z square uh, 2 times 1 over Z square okay. so this is you can check um, from the by the definition of Schwarz and derivative, so Schwarz and derivative is W Z. Uh, I already call W quarter uh, cubic derivative, and W prime C over two square Yeah. So just plug that into the honest cat question. You get this, and then you can obtain this one. And then what's important is this part. Uh, what's important is this part. Okay. What's important this part? Um, from here, one can just yeah, that one is here. From here, one can impose the L not cylinder, so the T cylinder of W uh, can be understood as the, the model expansion is the, can be written as L naught uh, cylinder and then e to the 2 pi W over L to the, oh sorry so this is N and n uh, let me think so yeah anyway so to compare uh, I think I'm I'm kind of doing tolerable walk here so 2 pi over L square so that's what you should get from uh, this analysis yeah. so you just do the following uh, the expansion to define the L0 cylinder so the L0 uh, cylinder is indeed equal to uh, sum over n is greater than 0 a minus n and n minus 1 over 24 so this is the uh, how we obtain the L uh, cylinder part. So minus one, minus one over twenty-four really come from here, and here you have a mode expansion uh, that the um, L no uh, L n d minus n minus two, and times minus two cancels the, the, the square, minus two cancels the square part, and you just compare this L n part for plane to L cylinder part. That will give you this one, but by after shift by one over twenty-four. Um, so therefore, the Hamiltonian in terms of the cylinder so in terms of this cylinder is given by uh, two pi over L. L not cylinder plus L not bar uh, cylinder, and uh, which so cylinder Hamiltonian is given by uh, two pi over L L not plane, uh, but up to shift the plane up to shift by this one. So therefore, uh, this is this is L not plane. Sorry. 
the generator of play and the cylinder is shifted by, by central charge of 1 over 12. So that will give you so the Casimir energy. So this part will give you the uh, Casimir energy or vacuum, um, the vacuum energy. Okay, so the, uh, the by, by using conformal transformation from the plane to cylinder, uh, you have to have the, you have a cost of this uh, Schwarzschild derivative that will give you the shift of the um, proportional to central charge that will give you the vacuum energy of the vacuum energy of the um, <coughs> of the theory. So therefore, the central charge. So this is one of the reasons why the central charge of 2D CFT is important. So in general, this becomes in general this becomes C over tw uh, 12. So therefore, the central charge of 2D CFT is very important because it measures also vacuum energy of the theory on the theory. Okay, so this was the yeah. One of the instances in the central charge of 2D CFT is very important. Why can we see the breath of energy on the plan description? Why you cannot? Good question. Good question. Um, good question. Why we cannot see the um yeah, good question. Um Hamiltonian I should have marked. So Hamiltonian is really this, this, this cylinder here. So it's a, to measure the really vacuum energy, the cylindrical description is suitable. And somehow if you do the conform map, it's hard to see the, the vacuum energy by uh, e to the 2 pi w over l. That's the question. Um, I should have known that, like a the like a prep. I think I mean I, he's asking a question not the, in terms of the cal uh, calculation wise. I think it's the physical physical ex explanation he wants. To be honest, I don't have a good answer now. Um, yeah, I mean. Uh, so this is the reason why I think I, I have written this. <laughs> So one point function of the uh, uh, this, the plane, this is plane of C, is given by uh, minus one uh, limit of epsilon equal to zero, um, del phi x plus epsilon del phi x and plus uh, one over e squared, and 
then if you use the uh, two-point function of this uh, this description, uh, it, it, it becomes zero. It becomes zero. So somehow L not plane acts on vacuum is zero. This consequence. But if you do the, uh, this this um, mapping to the I mean, uh, cylinder, you will get this shift that cost uh, that will give you the that will give you the uh, the vacuum energy of the the cylinder instead of plane. But to be honest, I don't have a good better answer at this moment. Why we need a cylindrical description to measure the vacuum energy? No, I don't have a good answer at this moment. Maybe I'll think about that. I mean, but here, really, the vacuum energy is really defined at the yeah. I think I don't have an answer at this moment. Sorry, uh, I'll try to find a better answer next time. Why cylinder is better than plane to measure vacuum energy? Sorry, I don't have it. Uh, next time I will uh, try to find a better answer. I should have known that. Okay, anyway, so. Any other questions? Yeah, at this moment I don't have better answer. Okay, then let me move on to free fermion. Can anybody search now like a Brumenhagen or yellow book? Why does it answer to the question? <laughs> anyway, does it written? Is it written somewhere? <laughs> I should have. Known. Okay, I I'll bring the answer to the next slide. Okay, let's move the free fermion. Um, so free fermion two dimension. Um, S is equal to so phi, and then the, the psi dagger, gamma zero, um, gamma mu. So this is for fermions. Um, often uh, this part is written by psi bar. And the gamma mu satisfy Clifford algebra. And here we impose the uh, condition of the yeah, Majorana ferment at the uh, psi star is equal to psi. This is the Majorana condition. We impose uh, yeah, this condition, and then if you write a psi as whatever, uh, this big psi is a small psi psi bar. So if you impose, uh, if you write like this way, this can and then also gamma zero can be zero one one zero uh, gamma one is equal to. Uh,
So then, uh, this, it's a good exercise to do that the difference can be written 1 over 2 pi uh, the x uh, psi bar um, in terms of the um, complex of all current. So therefore, uh, this psi on uh, the equation motion is like this way, so that the psi has to be homomorphic, and then, oh, uh, uh, am I writing something silly? Oh yeah, psi bar should be two. So psi has to be holomorphic, and the psi bar has to be anti-holomorphic. Um, this part is again derivation here. Is, uh, it's very straightforward to the homework. Uh, from move from one to the other, it's very straightforward, but uh, it's better to do in, in, in terms of Euclidean space. In Euclidean space, so you can easily see that the this these are satis these satisfy the the Grifo algebra. You, you can see them, right? Can you? So they commute, anti commute, uh, they, they anti commute. Like, can you see? I mean, gamma zero square is equal to one. Uh, gamma one square is equal to one. This you can see, right? And then anti commutation relation is also it's easy to yeah. So you get the one zero minus one. up to some factor is uh, gamma 0, gamma 1. So, so therefore, they satisfy group algebra. The other side? Um, yeah, times i, maybe, times i. So if you multiply gamma 0, 1, and minus 1, 1 minus 1. If you do the opposite, you have a minus 1, 1, 1. So they satisfy group algebra here. You understand? Know, so now eta mu nu is just a 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay. In Euclidean space. And then plug everything to here, and then you can write down in terms of complex current, you get to here. Okay, so uh, we do the same exercise for two-point function for these um, field in the following way. Uh, maybe it should go. Two-point function Q i j is now so this capital psi is two component. You have two component. So just write down is the uh, psi i of z um, x psi j of y i and j are one two okay. one two. Uh, one two means really this small psi and psi bar, and then and just rewrite this action as the uh, as like a free boson one over four pi is uh, d square uh, x d square y psi i um, ai j x y uh, psi j y. Okay. So then um, ai j of x and y is equal to delta x minus y um, gamma nu, gamma nu, i j and then so we know that the so this one so 
this k two point function is essentially inverse matrix of a. Okay, so so this one is essentially can be written as follows. Again, or not. Yeah. I think I should write down like point by a i k and the k k j x y is equal to delta x minus y delta i j. That's what we want to have. Essentially, this two point function is an inverse matrix of this uh, operator a. Inverse matrix. That's exactly what we have done for both both boson theory, free bosons. So then, just write down everything in terms of the in, in terms of explicitly by 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 matrix. Um, so plug in complex coded. So let me erase here. This equation can be written in homomorphic coordinate as follows. Um, in one over pi, so this is also homomorphic. It's 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 very straightforward indeed. Um, um, Two point function. the uh, k part and this is the um, a part essentially a part and this is k part and we do the following trick to write down the delta function so the other function is 1 over pi and then yeah I think I should write the bottom here So this is a trick I use. So, so this here, right hand side, has to, has to be delta function. So we use, use the following trick. Um, delta uh, of x or d and dw can be written as pi uh, d bar 1 over z is equal to 1 over pi. So we I use this following trick. Ha ha. Do you know how to get this one? This relation. Do you know how to get this relation? So essentially this derivative part is in indeed coming from for A and then uh, this part coming from K, just rewrite. And the other function, I just reuse this one. And so here, uh, you can just use the following two pi. Uh, maybe I, sh I don't need, I don't need to introduce the two pi. So d square uh, z is indeed equal to one over two pi. Okay, so let's do the following. So d square x. Delta x and x bar, x is equal to one, right? So we know this one, and this we write. Uh, I think uh, d z square delta d and d bar um, one over pi 
we can just write down like this way. And there must be... Oh my goodness. Uh, there must be some Jacobian factor should appear here. Huh? Minus? Minus 2i. Okay. Minus 2i, thank you very much. Minus 2i and... Are you sure? Can you do the competition? I think we... I, I would be happy if it is 1 over 2 pi. I would be happy this is the 1 over 2 pi. But, sorry, so this should involve the... So GZZ is equal to 1 half, 1 half, 0, 0. Is it true? 1 over 2i. Oh, wonderful. OK. So then, and then um, do the integral parts. OK? Integral parts. And the dz square is, as you know, dz and the dz bar. OK? But integral parts, you will get uh, 1 over 2 pi i uh, dz 1 over z. OK? OK? And then Campbell integral around the origin will give you 1. Do you understand? The same thing happened here. So if you can use this relation is 1 over 2i dz square uh, 1 over pi. And this is equal to 2 pi i uh, dz bar 1 over z bar. So this delta function, uh, maybe I should just use x instead of z and z bar. So delta function can be replaced by the, this derivative of 1 over z. Okay. So then compare between them from here, one can conclude Just compare uh, this whole anti homomorphic derivative acts on the same thing. Okay, so you get the one over z, and then anti homomorphic power is the same. Uh, just you just put the power on it. Otherwise, you. Therefore, OP of uh, the two um, premium can be understood as 1 over z minus w. Okay. Uh, similarly, so we can do the, the following. So the action, can, oh, did I erase action? Oh, action is still here. So here, uh, we can just use the uh, t, uh, z, z bar. Z bar, z bar can be understood as two times uh, Lagrangian divided by uh, partial by psi. So therefore, this will, will you just get So just this one will give you just a psi bar. Hmm. Why is that? Oh no no psi sorry. Yeah. And up to some factor one over pi. Um and the t. I don't know why I mean. 
Yeah. Uh, the D can be as two times uh, Lagrangian So this one is pi. And then uh, T, Z, Z bar can be understood as the um, two times uh, partial L, partial uh, psi minus 2L is uh, minus pi divided by um, indeed so this is not banishing but which is very strange from the point of view of the quantity from home field theory but since psi is now holomorphic but under holomorphic acts on it so equation motion will tell you that this is equal to T Indeed. So if you impose the equation motion, this is, is indeed zero. Okay. Um, let me give you the following. So therefore, uh, stress and holomorphic part of stress and energy tends to, okay, let, let me do it uh, at the end, the following OP. So T of Z, can be understood as the uh, minus one half, so therefore psi partial psi of z. This one from this analysis, and so this part can be understood t of z times pi, pi times t bar of z bar is equal to this one. Okay. So now we want to do the following called b of um, So let's let me help you to do the um, one half. So this is actually important. So now you have to be um, you can do the the OP like this way, either this way or or this way. Okay. Um, so we know that the, uh, this OPE um, can be understood as minus one half psi the z, uh, z minus w square. So this orange will give you this, this term. Can you see that? So this OP, so if you do the OPE, you get the one over z minus w times mi minus one half that z and the axon that z and if you take a derivative with respect to z you get the minus one over z minus w square the minus cancel and you have one half and you have a psi of z and the plus and it's for purple part to do the purple part you have to swap psi and partial psi, you get the minus sign, okay? Since it's a fermion, if you do the, so you have one half psi of z divided by z minus one, okay? That's how you cancel minus sign here. So if you do the OP for fermion, you have to be careful about sign. Okay, now do the Taylor expansion. So this one, one half uh, psi W, Z minus W square plus, since you have the extra piece will come from here, one half plus one half is one, you get the, okay. Do you understand? So this is equal to psi, psi W plus one, ah sorry, partial psi W plus dot 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 by Taylor expansion, divide time, times d minus w, plus dot dot dot, okay? I just do the Taylor expansion here, 
and plug that into here, you get the one half plus one half is the one. Okay. So therefore, you have OP of stress energy of psi. Therefore, conform dimension of psi is this is exactly the primary field. OP for primary field, and h is equal to one half. Psi is h equal to one half, which is natural from the action I already erased. Since essentially you have a psi partial psi or whatever, d to z. So this is two dimension, one dimension, so therefore psi should, should be scaling dimension one half. Okay? That's very natural. Okay, so let's stop here. Um, exercise is tz and tw in free primary. This is very important, you should do. Okay, uh, to see this, the um, OP. And uh, next time I will answer why the cylinder has to give you the vacuum energy instead of plane. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't have a good answer at this moment. Um, so, if you want to submit a homework, just hand in by hand. Question? Um, it's about the uh, vacuum energy in cylinder. I guess maybe it's about uh, periodic boundary condition. Periodic boundary condition. Uh, maybe you can avoid some divergence. Uh, I just guess. Okay. Periodic boundary condition we, for. We compared by space. Yes, yes. You can, so cylinder can have the uh, dive. Uh, ah, I see.